S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills, the wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis, the Queen of the West, Day Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Hey, here's a question every one of you buckaroos can answer. What can you always count on? <laughs> That's right. You can always count on anything bearing the brand name Post. So keep Post cereals on the shelf where they're handy, because Post cereals are good. Well, sir, Dale and Jonah and I may ride over to the gold fields. Rumor has it that a fellow named Don Wallace is setting himself up as boss of the camp at Winding Creek. <laughs> That's Don Wallace outside, Dick. Why don't you go out the back, take a little walk? Well, where'd I walk to, Lynn? I seen all there is to see around here a thousand times. You do what I tell you, Dick. Get some fresh air. It seems like I get more than my share of fresh air. Now you come back in a little while. Everything will be all right then. I'd like to come in, Lynn. I don't know that you're welcome, but come on. Where's your partner? Dick, he's out taking a walk. Why? Good. I think it's time you and me had a talk. I figured that was it. Uh, you and Dick got a valuable claim. Lots of gold in it. Richest claim in the digging, probably. Get to the point, Wallace. Dick is no good to you. He couldn't... Dick is my partner. He taught me prospecting. He was the... Wait till I finish. I want you and Dick to make out papers, giving me a third interest. So long, Wallace. Lynn, if you don't... Well, uh, prospectors always celebrate Saturday nights. Sometimes they're shooting the streets just for fun. But an innocent bystander could get hit. Especially an old fuddy-duddy like Dick. That hadn't better happen, Wallace. If it does, I'll be gunning for you. Yeah, look over what I said and let me know. I'll be at the trading post all day today. Might be hard to find me tomorrow, though. Lynn Dean sits back in his chair. Don Wallace is a man to be feared. Starting as the operator of the camp's general store, Wallace is branched out until almost every prospector is paying him tribute in one way or another, and all fear him. All? The name of Charles Fisher comes to Lynn's mind. Charles Fisher, a twisted, cantankerous man who works at odd jobs around the camp, but who is said to have been a brilliant lawyer until Wallace ruined him. Lynn gets up, puts on his hat, and goes outside. We don't know much about each other, Mr. Fisher. Yeah, but... don't Mr. Fisher me. I'm Charlie. Not even Charles. Charlie, a hireling, a porter. Okay, Charlie, if that's the way you want it. That's the way it is. There's been a lot of talk about you. Gossip. To the effect that you used to be somebody big until Wallace broke you. Uh, I'm a child boy, a messenger, nothing else. I heard it was different once. I heard you've spent the last five or ten years working here trying to collect evidence that will send Wallace to jail. And Wallace send you here to say that? No, I'm in trouble with Wallace, me and my partner. He's threatened to shoot Dick Saturday night. Street brawl? That's about it, so I've only got a couple of days. I know Roy Rogers in Paradise Valley, though. I thought if you did have any evidence against Wallace, I'd go see Roy and ask him to come up here and side with us. I got evidence, Sting. Not as much as I want. But you go see Rogers. If he's around when the shooting comes off, maybe the three of us together can put Wallace away. Let's try it. I've been living just to take that man for almost 12 years. It's a real pleasure to meet you, Mr. Fisher. I mean that. We've heard about your career more than once. Yeah, sit down. Uh, I use those boxes for chairs. 
Uh, uh, just a minute, I'll move them out from under my washing. Rain. Couldn't hang my clothes outdoors. Yeah, I hope authors of books don't wind up this way. I got evidence, Rogers. Not as much as I want, but more than you might think. To put Wallace away for good, we need something big, like this shooting he planned. We're not going to let Dick be shot. You bet we're not. Attempted shooting, I meant to say. We talked this over on the way up, Mr. Fisher. I never like to go after a man unless he knows I'm after him. Wallace is different. So I thought I'd like to be seen around the camp with Dick. We might even go into Wallace's store together a few times on the pretense of buying something. Uh, good idea. Good. Oh, and uh, Rogers, uh, the evidence I've collected is in this floor safe here. I'll tell you now in case anything happens to me. Now, don't you think thoughts like that? Well, thanks for your confidence. I'm proud of this safe. After Wallace ruined me, I... Use my last money to buy it, knowing I'd be spending a good long time finishing it. Mm. We'll go right to work, Mr. Fisher. Len, suppose we look up your partner next and let me take him around a little. Old Dick Wiley, childlike because of age and long years of hard labor, is delighted to be in the company of Roy, Dale, and Jonah. He shows them about the camp, chattering happily, unknowing of the peril he is in. But certain eyes are watching, some hopeful, aware that Roy is ready to tangle with Wallace, and other eyes ugly, cold, threatening, the eyes of Wallace and his henchmen. Roy, like Dale and Jonah, pretend not to notice. By the end of the day, every man in camp, good and bad alike, is aware of their presence. They enter Wallace's store. Now, this here is the trading post, Roy. Owned by a real comfortable lady named Margaret. No, no, I'm mistaken. This, this must be another trading post. Don Wallace owns this one, I think, doesn't he, Dick? Yes. Yes, the one Margaret Fallon owned must be some other place in some other time, too, I guess. That's probably Wallace in the back room. Yes, well, by the look of him, I bet you ain't never read a book in his life. A elevating one, anyhow. Why don't you read him a chapter of yours, Jonah? Oh, poo. This is Don Wallace coming toward us, Roy. Heard something about him. Can't remember quite what. Seems like it was bad, though. Well, Rogers, I wondered if you and your friends weren't going to honor me with a call. Dick Wiley here has been showing us around the camp. You like it? I'm a little surprised. The first gold mining camp I've ever seen that's built so permanent. Well, let's see, uh... We came in for some shells, 38s. Sure. How many boxes? One ought to do. Yeah. Not thinking on doing much shooting, eh? Never do much. No, Roy don't have to. He shoots straight. Jonah. Yeah, well, he does. Yeah. I thought maybe he was thinking on staying till Saturday night. I'm not sure just how long we'll stay. Oh, you had not ought to go before then. It's always like a celebration on Saturdays. Right, Dick? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I've heard about it. Take what I owe you out of this, will you, Wallace? Oh, makes us just even, Rogers. Things are a little higher here than down in the valley. Uh, transportation. Okay. You folks ready? Anytime. I've been ready. Oh, to be getting no worse than see the gallivanting off this way. It ain't fair to my partner. Dick, it's getting dark. Lynn's probably home from the claim by now. Dark. Time passes so fast. Life will be over for I know it. Oh, Roger. Yeah? There's a wreck of a man living in a shack at the east end of the camp. A flunky. Does a dirty job nobody else wants to do. You might get in touch with him if you really want to get something on me. Charles Fish is his name. I understand he spent years collecting evidence. I'll remember that, Wallace. <laughs> But how would Wallace know that? I just can't understand it. From the few minutes we spent in the store, I'd say Wallace doesn't miss much of anything that goes on. We left a note on Mr. Fisher's door, asking him to stop by as soon as he could. Yeah, I wrote it myself. I'm an author, you know. Well, Fisher spent the afternoon patching a roof. Haven't seen him since. He'll be along. Don't worry. Roy, I just can't have anything happen to Dick. He's not worth much now, but he raised me in this business. 
took me in when I was a kid, taught me and babied me. Just to make sure, do you think I ought to give Wallace the third of our claim? Dick could never know. Look here. We came here to take some of the fight out of Wallace, and that's just what we intend to do. Well, I was only thinking of Dick. Roy won't fail you, Lynn, no matter what happens. No, and as much as I want to leave for Saturday, I'll stay over, too, if I have to. You got something to do Saturday, Jonah? I, well, it ain't nothing important. You see, Dorothy May's got the idea us literary men has high tastes, uh, like the finer things, you know. Well, where did she ever get that idea? Why, Roy, from me. I say from me. I mean, I do have them, all right. <laughs> Anyhow, she invited me to go to Cecilia Haggerty's with her Saturday night to listen to the radio. A <laughs> uh -huh. uh, concert, she called it. Some feller, uh, oh, a clown, Dorothy May says, is going to sing, going to sing a song called Ari Polly Hotcha. <laughs> What's that? Ari Polly Hotcha? You know, that's what Dorothy May says. <laughs> you don't happen to mean the aria from Pagliacci. That is an opera. Oh, no, convolutions. Well, you literary men have high taste, you mm. know. Oh, sure, Roy. I thought all the time Polly Hotcha was some trappy. Oh, oh convolutions. <laughs> hey, Roy, excuse me. It's late. I wonder if we hadn't ought to go see Charlie Fisher. He should be warned of what Wallace said. I think you're right, Lynn. Wallace knows everything that goes on. He may have seen the note on the door and taken it. <laughs> No use knocking anymore. He doesn't answer. Let's go in, Roy. Yeah. Ah, please. And me an old soldier. Doc. In just a minute. I've got a match. Hmm. Even one high-class fiddle makes me yawn all evening. There. Close the door, will you, Jonah? Uh-huh. He generally keeps a lantern on the table. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm. What? Mr. Fisher is here after all. Is he dead, Roy? I'm afraid so. I'll light the lantern. Shot twice. Don't touch anything. Now listen to me. Wallace had a reason for telling us Mr. Fisher was gathering evidence. He knew we'd come here to warn him. When we leave, we'll be arrested for... Stand right where you are. I'm the law. Oh. Well, deputy, it looks as though there's been a killing. You folks are under arrest for the murder of our good friend and fellow citizen, Charles Fisher. Yeah, I was just about to say this is what would happen. Well, that's the fastest we've ever been framed. <laughs> Ever dream that a cereal could be so delicious, folks would be eating it all day long? Well, you know, there is such a cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Folks start off eating Post Sugar Crisp at breakfast time. It's really a treat with milk or cream. No sugar needed. It's just sweet enough. Long about snack time, you'll reach for the Sugar Crisp, too. Its wholesome wheat and rich candy coating makes it a wonderful between-meal pickup. And then there are lots of folks who take Sugar Crisp right along with them, wherever they go, and nibble it right out of the package. Like candy. Think of it. A cereal treat so delicious you just can't stop eating it. So make sure you try Post Sugar Crisp. And have it for breakfast first thing tomorrow. Get Post Sugar Crisp in the giant or regular size package with the three little bears on the front. Surprised first by finding Charles Fisher on the floor of his shack dead, Roy, Dale, Jonah, and their friend Lynn Dean are further surprised by the sudden appearance of Don Wallace and a deputy sheriff. From all outward appearances, they could be guilty of murder. The deputy takes them to jail at once, locks them in the single cell, and there they remain, framed by Wallace and in a mining camp where there are few friends. Wallace worked that pretty slick. Yes, he did, Dale. Fisher was the only man in camp who dared oppose Wallace. Outside of Lynn here, now he's dead and we're in jail charged with murdering him. Yeah, probably have to stay here past Saturday, too, won't we're we? are liable to be here from now on. Uh-huh. Be a big disappointment to Dorothy May. Lynn D. Deputy, he wants me. Yes, sir. A couple of visitors here to see you. It uh, may be Wallace. He's probably fixed things up for you to go free if you give up your claim. No, sir, I'll not give up. Promise anything he wants. We'll settle it later if you get a chance. All right, come on with me. 
Yes, sir. Deputy, if there's a lawyer in camp, will you send word for him to come over here? If I'm not... I'll see what I can do, Rogers. You wait in here till I lock up. The deputy sheriff closes the cell door, locks it, then motions to Lynn Dean. They walk down the hallway toward the office. Roy, Dale, and Shona are left alone, not knowing in this camp where one man dictates all things that their rights under the law will be given them. Twenty minutes pass. Then the deputy appears again. Twenty minutes pass. Then the deputy appears again. Rogers, I got that lawyer for you. Good. Let him in. You can come out and see him in the office. Don't go, Roy. If it is a lawyer, he should come in. I'll be careful, Dale. Say, Roy, uh, see if you can get word to Dorothy May, huh? She may think I've done this on purpose to get out of here in the airy potty hot shop. All right. Let's go, Roger. You bet. I want to thank you for getting the lawyer, Deputy. We give a man what he's entitled to up here. Straight down this hall now. What happened to our friend Lynn Dean? The same lawyer took care of him as is going to take care of you. What's the lawyer's name? Why, uh, I forget. He'll have to tell you himself. You forget, eh? Right through here. Hey, where's the lawyer, Deputy? Uh, me and my friend will act as your attorney, Rogers. What makes you think I want you, Wallace? My friend will hold a gun on you while the deputy and I take down your confession. And if I don't want to confess? Uh, we're hoping that's the case. We'd like to work you over until you do. Put that gun on him, Ken. Now then, Sheriff, get over on that side, and I'll stay here. A hatchet-faced trigger man stands a few paces away, covering Roy with his gun. The deputy sheriff is moving to Roy's left side, while Wallace closes in from the right. Wallace swings. Roy ducks, lunges forward, catches hold of Wallace, hurling him back against the trigger man. The trigger man's gun fires. Roy swings at the deputy, throwing him off balance. Swings again. The deputy goes down. Roy jumps to the top of the desk, then crashes down on Wallace's trigger man, who are coming toward him. They all hit the floor. Roy on top, fighting, fighting, fighting. The gunman suddenly goes quiet. Roy drives a fist in Wallace's stomach. Wallace relaxes completely. I'll just take those guns and the keys. Wallace will get you, Rogers. Not now, he won't, because you three are going back to the cell. I'm locking you in and letting my partners out. This is going to be the biggest jailbreak you ever saw. Say, Roy, Roy, you didn't send word to Dorothy Maid I couldn't get there, did you? Because I can, I... Well, I haven't even thought about Dorothy Maid, Jonah. Oh, where are we heading now, Roy? Not home. Our first stop will be Charles Fisher's shack. I want to find out if the rattler who killed him knew about the safe and the evidence that was in it. No light showing under the door. No horses around the shack either. Hmm, yeah. Harper. Folks are doing society the hard way. Stand back. I'll try the door. Well, maybe it'll rain by Saturday and this fellow will get a cold. Shh, quiet, Jonah. Oh, yes, quiet. Somebody in the room. I don't see him. But a safe. Maybe I should have stayed in jail. All right, mister. You're covered. I'm not moving. It's Lynn Dean. Is that you, Roy? Yeah. How'd you get out of jail? We were wondering the same thing about you. Well, I got out by lying. Wallace offered to square things if I signed my claim over to him. How about the evidence Mr. Fisher had? That's why you came here, isn't it? Yeah, but somebody beat me here. The safe has been busted open. It's empty. The killer's got it. Sure are troublemakers, ain't they? It's pretty plain Wallace had something to do with the killing. Well, let's go on over to his place and see if he stashed it away. More than likely, he's destroyed it. Well, he may not have had a chance yet, Dale. Yeah, I better close this door, I suppose. I, I huh? suppose you... Hey, they're loose. Who? Wallace and the deputy. See them? Now, ain't that a predicament? They must have had help. Or maybe one of them was carrying an extra key. We've got to locate that evidence, though. It'll tell us who the killer is. Lynn, Wallace should be friendly with you. After and... his own fashion. Get him over to your cabin. Make an excuse. Uh, tell him he'll have to help talk Dick into giving up part of the claim. Well, try, Roy. Do more than try. We need the time to search the store. Time is more important than anything else right now. Well, I'm 
about ready to give up. Well, if there's evidence here, I'll find you, Roy. Even if it takes until Monday. Yeah. Huh? I think your lady friend has put a ring in your nose, Jonah. So do I. Oh, now, what do you mean, a ring in my nose? Well, she won't let you pay for typing your book. She told you just to give her a present of some kind. Well, Edward, what's wrong with that? The kind of presents she wants. A moving picture camera, a console radio. Yeah, and then to make sure you realize how much radio means to her, she invites you to a neighbor's house Saturday to hear theirs. Well, now, that's... Na- oh, convolutions. <laughs> you suppose that's it? Well, sure. Well, what else could it be? Well, keep looking. Don't stop. Yeah, well, the whole trouble is she looks out at me from under them long lashes. And she sidles over my way, a smile and that fetch me a sandwich smile. <laughs> and I just can't see I Oh no. No, sir. Now I boy, I don't believe Dorothy may do a low down snide trick like that. Especially not to a literary Roy! Oh. Listen. Roy They're coming. Wallace is coming. Down, get down. Oh chance. Len Roy. Len fell, he's shot. No, I'm all right. I don't Wallace guessed you were here. He's coming. Him and the deputy sheriff. Raise your hand in there. Keep quiet and watch me. We don't have to wait. We can shoot you down. You're fugitives. Come and get us, Wallace. Don't move. I'll take care of this. Rogers, keep your hands. Ah! I put his flashlight out. Get him. Get him, Roy. For a moment, there's no sound in the inky black store. Roy, Dale, Jonah, and Lynn Dean lie crouched temporarily safe. Somewhere ahead of them are Wallace and the deputy sheriff. Neither side knows what the other is doing. Ears, eyes, big head. He moves a foot, two feet. What's that? The outline of a man. This is his gun to fire. Is there somebody in here? I hear it shooting. Roy, hey, it's Dick. Roy lowers his gun. Dick Wiley is at the door in a direct line of fire. Wallace and the deputy can shoot at Roy and his friends, but they cannot shoot at Wallace or the deputy for fear of hitting old Dick. Funny thing, I hear it shooting. I, I know it comes from here and the door is open, but nobody can... Hey, hey, Dick bumped into him. Come on. Take the old bucket, Sheriff. Get him out of here. Let me go. Let me go. Take him. Rogers is coming. I'm already here. <laughs> now, you deputy, I, I give up, Rogers. I surrender. Get him, folks. You got him. You double got him. Let's search him. Light a lamp. If Wallace has Fisher's evidence on his person, I'm taking it sure. Say, partners, time you got on the trail of a bountiful bowl full of new, improved post-toasties, the heap good cornflakes. Sure as shooting, those poppin' fresh cornflakes with that wonderful sweet kernel flavor will make you say, best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post-toasties, heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Yes, post toasties are so fresh, so crackling crisp, they won't mush up in milk. And you've just got to taste that wonderful corn flavor to believe it. Once your favorite Indians try post toasties, Mom, bet you won't have to rope in any members of your tribe for breakfast. They'll come on the gallop next time you call. Post toasties. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Something grabbed me in the dark. Keep that gun on Wallace, Jonah. I didn't know what it was. Let's see inside that shirt, Wallace. Oh, I was scared. I was awful scared. Well, everything's all right now, Dick. You're safe. You grab me. Find you anything, grab Roy? Me, in just a minute, I, I think. Here, Dale. Take a look at this. I'll see if there's anything else. Yeah, raise him up there. You want to get perforated? Oh, say, that's a literary word. I think you've found what we want, Roy, in this big envelope. Good. Yeah, I should say you have... There's enough here to send Wallace up for a long time. That plus the killing ought to do it. We don't know anything about the killing. You will. And so will your deputy sheriff friend by the time we take you to the county seat and the district attorney gets through with you. Start moving. Well, Jonah. 
How was the opera broadcast? Oh, say, I want to tell you two something. There is a song like I never heard before. You liked it? Why, Dale, that fella just went wild singing that Polly Hot Shot stuff. <laughs> yes, he did. Why, first he'd laugh, and then he'd cry, <laughs> and, and he'd bay some like a bass-voiced coonhound, <laughs> and, and then he'd just bust into tears. Oh, convolutions, it was really something to hear. You <laughs> honestly liked it then, huh? Yes, sir, Roy, I sure did. Of course, I wouldn't hardly call it music. Not music? Well, that does it. Yeah, well, I told Dorothy May so, too. What'd she say to that? Yeah, nothing. She never says much, you know. She just looks... I know. She just looks out at you from under them long eyelashes. Yeah, and sidles <laughs> over and smiles. Dale, mm -hmm. I'm afraid we'll have to put a halter on her old friend here. Or we'll find him grazing on Dorothy May's range. Why, no such... I say uh, no Providing, such... of course, uh, <laughs> he kicks in with a few console radios, uh -huh. a, a moving picture camera, and one or two other things. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling on till then. The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials, each week at this same time, with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Nestor Piva, Arthur Q. Bryan, Francis X. Bushman, and Parley Bear. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you until we meet again.
happy tales to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you. Till 